and no call. Good evening, I'm Natasha Soper. We begin tonight in the ACT where the government is denying it has double standards after Western Australian politicians were freed from quarantine to attend Parliament. It comes as Perth and parts of Western Australia have been declared COVID hotspots by the capital. Escaping hotel quarantine. They are classified as essential workers. Today, federal politicians granted a health exemption to attend three days of parliament for the first sitting week of the year. The group touching down in Canberra from Perth overnight, initially ordered to isolate. It's a precaution and I understand it. So. We'll just abide by the rules. After the Western Australia government enforced a hard five-day lockdown following a hotel quarantine worker contracting coronavirus. We're waiting for further advice from the ACT government, so we are all going to our accommodation wearing masks and isolating until we get further information. But despite other passengers from Perth, Peel or the southwest regions of Western Australia being ordered to isolate as of two o'clock this afternoon, work is underway to free these MPs and senators. No, I don't think that's very fair at all. In fact, I think a lot of the uh, actions over this COVID-19 have been unequal. If they're going straight into Parliament House, I mean, it's a fairly locked down sort of place as long as they uh, lockdown outside of work. But the ACT government argues they are not above the new public health direction. I would argue that parliamentarians are treated in the same way as everyone else in that they have the opportunity uh, to apply for an exemption as an essential worker. Attorney General Christian Porter today criticised seen this morning not wearing a mask or social distancing after attending the ceremony welcome of High Court Judge Simon Stewart. We have been working with the Attorney General However, as directed, the public health direction is not coming in place until 2pm at the moment. Political staffers and advisers have not been granted exemptions and remain in isolation. And reporter Kimberly Keynes is live in Canberra. Kim, take us through the new health order. Well, Tash, from 2 p.m. today, anyone in the ACT from the Perth, Peel and southwest regions of Western Australia since January 25 have been ordered to get tested and quarantine until Friday. The ACT government has reinstated its online COVID declaration form today, requiring anyone who has travelled from the WA hotspots to fill it out. Uh, the new COVID uh, scare has renewed calls for Canberrans to get tested, especially in the Belconnen area, where fragments of the virus were detected in sewerage on the weekend. In some good news this afternoon, zero local cases have been recorded in Western Australia with hopes the restrictions will not extend beyond Friday. Tash? That is good news. Thank you, Kim. Meanwhile, New South Wales is taking precautions to stop Perth's COVID outbreak jumping state lines. Anyone who has flown in from areas now locked down in WA must adhere to the same state home order until 9pm Friday. Those who have been at any of the WA hotspot locations will also need to get tested and isolate for 14 days. Premier Gladys Berejiklian saying the current situation is manageable. I think the steps we've taken are completely proportionate to the risk, uh, but of course that's evolving. But uh, there's no there's no reason for us to do anything beyond what we're doing now. But at this stage, we don't feel we need to do any more. The Northern Territory lifting its hotspot declaration for Sydney's Cumberland Council as New South Wales records its fee of no community transmission. WA now the only jurisdiction closed to New South Wales. A 19-year-old train in hospital after falling four metres on a construction site in Kayama this morning. Reporter Caitlin Stedman has more. Safe Work New South Wales inspectors have arrived on site. They're now investigating the circumstances surrounding the fall. The 19-year-old plummeted four metres inside the construction site on Signet Avenue at about 7.30 this morning. It's believed he fell through scaffolding and straight onto concrete, knocking him unconscious. He was in a lot of pain and he was obviously worried about what had happened. He was uh, worried about his injuries. 
Um, initially couldn't remember things, but his uh, memory of events started to come back. The tradie was treated on scene for serious head and spinal injuries with possible back and ankle fractures, as well as a fractured dislocation to his left elbow. Two ambulance crews worked on the 19-year-old on the construction site for some time before transporting him to Shell Harbour Airport. The crew worked well together and as a team to take, bring him to the helicopter base where then he was transported by the uh, ambulance helicopter to St George Hospital. Located in the heart of the city, the soon-to-be business hub with a proposed childcare centre on the top floor was shut down for a number of hours. Fellow tradesmen were taken off the site while SafeWork New South Wales inspectors went in to investigate. Paramedics say there's been a recent spike in workplace incidents. They're reminding tradies to take all safety precautions and to keep an eye on workmates. Tash? Caitlin Stedman there. A woman has been killed after her car lost control, falling 12 metres down an embankment on the Kings Highway near Batemans Bay. A resident discovered the 68-year-old and she was transported to Canberra Hospital but sadly passed away this morning. Police are asking anyone who may have seen the collision around midday yesterday to come forward. Thousands of litres of herbicides have spilled into a creek near Wagga after a truck carrying the toxic chemicals crashed on Friday afternoon. The Environmental Protection Agency is now testing the, the site, hoping they've prevented the spill from seeping into the local water supply. A potential ecological disaster, thousands of litres of toxic chemical drained straight into the Kajura Creek near Tarkata. Which presented a very um, serious environmental hazard. A bee double carrying 30,000 litres of herbicide veered off the road and into this creek on Friday afternoon, tragically killing the male driver in his 40s. While emergency crews tried to contain the spill, some residue has contaminated the local drinking and livestock water supplies downstream. As a precaution, um, get them not to pump water from um, the creeks. Around 4,000 litres of herbicide is believed to have spilt into the creek, scaring off everyone but the rats. We will probably see some um, dead vegetation um, and it is harmful to um, aquatic organisms, um, but in, in low levels it's not a problem for um, animals and sheep. And it took more than 40 firefighters and Environmental Protection Agency officials almost 48 hours to bring the situation under control. Officials delicately pumping toxins from both the heavy vehicle and waterway. We have now got um, sucker trucks in and they have actually extracted 96,000 litres of water from the creek. Authorities saying the majority of the spill has now been contained. It was a serious issue, but it could have been far worse. The EPA confirming it will conduct further tests on the area in the coming weeks, but only time will tell the extent of the damage. Bill Ormond, Nine News. A Kayama man accused of sexually touching four young girls at the town's leisure centre in October last year has pleaded not guilty in court this afternoon. 77-year-old John Booth allegedly swam up to the girls aged between 9 and 11 years old and turned back underwater. He'll front court again next month. A torrential downpour this afternoon has caused minor flood. The heavy rain lasted less than an hour but caused drains to overflow. A severe thunderstorm warning remains in place for the region tonight and drivers are being told to avoid floodwaters. After a superstorm lashed parks in January, local businesses and council get assistance. Today, their calls were answered. The event now declared a natural disaster with those eligible able to apply for funding as the cleanup continues. Slammed with more than 100 mils of rain and hail in half an hour plus 150 kilometre gusts of wind. Almost one month to the day since Parks was pummeled by a supercell storm, the state and federal governments are coming to the rescue. This is immediate relief. This is the first phase in terms of the recovery, making sure that people and businesses have some dignity and respect to be able to start to get back up on their feet. Council will cash in more than a million dollars for its damage, while homeowners and businesses can apply for grants and loans. Oh, look, it'll help with a lot of the 
removal of all the trees and things that we've undertaken and still many to, many to go out on the Wellington Road area. The park's library is still a no-go zone after it was flooded. <laughs> Staff are waiting to hear back from insurers, as is the owner of the regional business supply store. Anything that the government can declare uh, as, as a natural disaster frees up not only the funding but it also frees up the questions from insurance companies to say, you know, having to verify, yes, it did happen. Around $50,000 worth of stock was completely ruined. Very first aisle, which is stationary, it was all paper goods, so as soon as they got water on them, they're pretty much destroyed. Disaster assistance has also been made available for affected residents and businesses in Glen Innes and Tamworth, which were also lashed by severe storms last month. Effectively, whatever it costs. Naomi Avery, Nine News. You're watching Nine News Locals still ahead. Classes return as students and teachers head back to school in Canberra. The new data that reveals how regional New South Wales is beating Sydney's housing market. A major milestone in the construction of the new Wagga Base Hospital and the Hawks return to the nest after a month on the road. One of the greatest Aussie films of all time. You are wicked! Tony Collette and Rachel Griffiths. Muriel's Wedding, Thursday, 8.30 on 9. Let life challenge you, not your skin. Ole Power Duo. For plumper and more radiant skin from day one. Fear less, face more. distracting new deal every week in February. This week, get a $6 small Big Mac meal and cheeseburger. Order today only on the My Macca's app. Right now, get 50 gigabytes of data for just $35 a month for the first 12 months, plus three months of Amazon Prime and Amazon Music Unlimited on us. You rule with Vodafone. Scott Morrison, Christian Porter, Josh Frydenberg. Explain to Australians why your Liberal government has not prosecuted the past Howard Liberal government members of the National Security Committee of Cabinet who apparently authorised the illegal bugging of the Timorese Cabinet. Bernard Caleri and Witness K, who exposed the truth, are the only people charged. Morrison, Porter, Frydenberg. Are you involved in an organised crime cover-up by not charging the Howard government members who authorised the illegal bugging? Please explain. Authorised by Ian Melrose, Melbourne. Window fully pinata, Keith. Some insurers don't fix it excess free, which could affect next year's party budget. That's not a pinata, Dad. But luckily, Amy has an option that does, and that's what I call a pinata. Does your home insurer offer optional excess free glass cover? Amy does. The new Aussie Angus Burger has arrived at Macca's. Made with delicious onion rings and bacon. Or grab a side of the new Golden Onion Rings. Wherever summer takes you, we'll be here. If you're 35 or older and recent now looking for work or to upgrade your skills, then apply for a fee-free Mature Age Worker Scholarship to help you get back to work. Search TAFE New South Wales or call 131 601. A real estate in Bathurst has apologised over a blog post that's been slammed as misogynistic. The article, which has since been pulled from their website, includes tips on how single women can buy their own home. Bathurst Real Estate told Nine News Local the post was redirected to its website from another blog. Regional New South Wales has continued to outperform Sydney's housing market during the pandemic. New CoreLogic data shows a 1.5% increase in dwelling values outside of the state's capital in the past month. The Shoalhaven and Southern Highlands have been standout growth areas up 11% in the past year. It's back to the books for thousands of students across the ACE. Eight demand in the capital. The government is promising a cash splash in its first budget in a COVID-19 world. But with concerns about the Territory's school results, the opposition says it's too little, too late. 
The first day, exciting for some. I'm feeling happy. Daunting for others, and not just those in the classroom. We've had some parents spying through the little window just to make sure that they're all settled. Brand new students in brand new digs. Evelyn Scott School, part of a plan to meet the demands of the capital's growing population. And more than 50,000 students are going back to school for 2021. Uh, in a brand new school, it is very fitting that we're able to have a series of announcements this week uh, that will go to the delivery of our election commitments. That includes promises of a continued spend on schools in next week's ACT budget, including $888,000 until 2025 for scholarships to train 10 educators as teacher librarians each year. Making sure students have all the digital technology that they need and also applying those imaginations and their wonderings in their reading and literacy skills but also in other activities so that they can enjoy that as well. The shadow education minister says today's announcement is one the Liberals will support but when it comes to education funding it's too little too late. Why is it that under this Labor government uh, that we've been falling behind whether it be in literacy be it in numeracy in science in languages uh, the kids that are crowded in some classrooms and into mountables. The answer the opposition claims is the government's been letting education slip in its order of priority whether that's the case to be seen in next Tuesday's budget. Harry Frost, Nine News. Meanwhile, for the first time, cameras have been allowed into Wagga's newest school. A stellar public school was opened on Friday with 16 state-of-the-art classrooms catering for up to 480 students. Principal Tracy Delaney says enrolments for the first day were well below capacity, though, but she says they expect it will fill rapidly throughout the year. Estella and Gobbagambalan and Baruma in this area has the second highest growth rate in the state. We're getting enrolments daily. Ms Delaney said the school buildings were completed on time but a temporary student drop-off zone ace. Wollongong councillors will meet tonight to discuss a plan to turn Cliff Road into a one-way street in order to create a dedicated cycle lane. The scenic stretch has become popular with bike riders in recent years, causing traffic issues. Mayor Gordon Bradbury has suggested the Blue Mile also be used for pedestrians only. Some residents say they're concerned about access to their property. The main entrance to the new Wagga Base Hospital is now open and healthcare providers working in makeshift buildings are preparing to move in. Dozens of services will be provided and women's health advocates are hopeful one on offer will be the region's first dedicated abortion clinic. 60 separate services all under the same roof. The front doors are open on the final stage of the Wagga Base Hospital redevelopment, the health services hub of the Riverina. It's fantastic. It's, uh, it's awesome. It's been a long time coming. 400 staff currently working at 12 different sites, including demountables and off-site clinics, will begin moving in in stages. All of our existing allied health services, the majority of our outpatient services, including the specialist clinics. We should be moving in in a few months, so we don't know the exact date at this point in time. The layout of the building has been designed around the patient, so services typically used in partnership are nearby to one another. It means we'll be able to work around a patient rather than a patient have to go to multiple different locations for different services. The Murrumbidgee Local Health District has confirmed it is considering a plan for one of those services offered in the new building to be pregnancy terminations in a specialist, publicly funded clinic run by nursing staff. MLHD said it received the proposal before Christmas, but wouldn't comment further on the details. The application comes from a working party of healthcare workers and women's health advocates established mid last year, with the goal of improving access to safe, affordable medical terminations for women in the Riverina, where many doctors object to performing them. If approved, the working party hoped the clinic will be established by midway through next year. Will Murray, Nine News. An iconic river race close to Wagga's heart has been cancelled for a third straight year. The Gumi Race is an event where competitors build rafts and float down the Murrumbidgee River to raise money for charity. Drought meant the race was axed the past two years. Now COVID has brought the 2021 event undone. Organisers are confident it will return in 2022.
Stay with us coming up in sport. Wollongong welcomes the Hawks back home, but how long will they stick around? And a Tathra team makes her AFLW debut. Watch out with Sundays. Here come the travel guides. Tuesday, 7.30 on 9. Window fully pinata, Keith. Some insurers don't fix it excess free, which could affect next year's party budget. That's not a pinata, Dad. But luckily, Amy has an option that does, and that's what I call a pinata. Does your home insurer offer optional excess free glass cover? Amy does. If you've been thinking about university, there's never been a better time to enrol because Open Universities Australia are here to help you along the way. Get started by exploring thousands of online courses from leading universities across the country. And we'll help you enrol online with ease without entry requirements. But enrolments close on the 21st of February. So why wait? when you can get started with Open Universities Australia. Explore. Choose. Enrol. Discover the art of simplicity at the King's Summer Sale. Save up to 50% on Australian design. So why buy ordinary furniture when you can come home to King? Sale ends Sunday. An important message from the Australian government. If you see something suspicious or a crime being committed, you should turn around and walk away. Say and do absolutely nothing. Don't report anything to government authorities or police. Bernard Collieri, Witness K, David McBride, Richard Boyle, Julian Assange. All exposed crimes and now face criminal charges and jail. If you see a crime, turn around, walk away. An important message from the Australian government. Authorised by Ian Melrose, Melbourne. It's sweet and so irresistible. You Take your summer pick-me-up with a delicious McCafe flavoured iced coffee. Drive through today. Can I have a word? I have every expectation you'll get it. But there is a problem. You do not go off to come meet Morgan with a knife or a gun. You go with an army. I'm not the enemy. All in one place. Nine.com.au Tathra product Tani Evans has made her AFLW debut for the GWS Giants on the weekend. The 18-year-old finished up with 10 possessions and two clearances in the side's 58-28 to loss to the Fremantle Dockers. The Giants take on the Eagles this weekend. Helping pull off the Heat's biggest win of the season, Sam Hazlitt took advantage of a breakdown in the Sydney Thunder's bowling to blast Brisbane into another finals clash at Monica Oval. Though the Thunder set a respectable target of 159 to win, Hazlitt hit six fours and three sixes to help his side to a seven-wicket win. The Heat will now face off with the Scorchers in Canberra on Thursday. The Hawks have had their first training session in Wollongong after more than a month on the road. A high as the side pushes to keep up their winning streak, scheduled to fly to Melbourne this weekend. The Illawarra boys are back in town. From a newly formed squad to the NBL's ladder leaders, this is a different side to the one that packed their bags for Albury last December. That camaraderie of just staying together and um, practicing every day, doing a similar routine, I think that's helped us a lot. Returning to the WEC today after a four-week stint on the road, players have been talking about making their boot camp style prep an annual tradition. You spend all, all, all time with each other, you get to know each other better off the court, so when you come together on the court, you fight harder for each other and there's more passion involved, I think. Imports Tyler Harvey, Justinian Jessup and Justin Simon have been dominant so far this season. A little floating left-hander. But it coach Brian right. Gorgian has credited his side's four straight wins to homegrown talent. We decided when we put this together, the ones we keep, we're going to build around and give an opportunity. And those guys have performed. 
Gearing up to play South East Melbourne Phoenix this Sunday, star signing Dengadel is moving towards a starting spot. There's no rush on that. Um, you know, we have a lot of guys that can play different positions, so we're just trying to find the rhythm now and just flow, and then um, you know, looking to make that transition soon. The NBL's round five fixture is yet to be released, but there are rumours that the Hawks have secured their first home game of the season here at the WEC ahead of the NBL Cup in Melbourne. When, I don't know, and how it's going to work, I don't know, but I'm certainly excited for that day. James Wilson, Nine News. Round one of the Laurie Daly and Andrew Johns Cup is set to kick off this weekend with the Western Rams hosting the Illawarra South Coast Dragons in Cowra. The day kicks off from 10am on Saturday at Sid Calls Oval. Tickets are available online. Next on our news, local Gavin Morris is back with all the weather for your working week ahead. Marry me. Bloody yes! Miranda Tapsell in the Aussie love story. The tops them all. Top end wedding. Wednesday, 8.30 on 9. Australia to wake up to sleep. It's scientifically proven to give us more energy, clearer judgment, and better memory. 40 Winks, serious about sleep. Right now, get 50 gigabytes of data for just $35 a month for the first 12 months, plus three months of Amazon Prime and Amazon Music Unlimited on us. You rule with Vodafone. Cleaner, fresher air with frost wash technology from Hitachi. Find your nearest Hitachi authorised dealer at hitachiaircon.com.au. Everything you touch turns to savings with Aldi's permanently low prices. Checkout keeps you on your toes, though. That's good, different. Meet Steve, a lifelong messer. Until he found the power of Raid Max with new double nozzle. Makes missing impossible and killing bugs inevitable. SC Johnson. All in one place. Nine.com.au. Now time to catch up on the latest weather details. So it's over to Gavin Morris. Good evening. It's certainly been a very interesting afternoon right across the Riverina. Storm clusters galore tracking onto the southwest slopes and that's going to make its way right across the southeast corner of New South Wales and the capital overnight. It's quite an impressive system here. There's a lot of moisture wrapped up in this and there's a lot to feed off. It's quite hot. It's quite humid ahead of it. So that's going to make for a big line of storms contracting into northern New South Wales throughout tomorrow. So for us, it's going to clear up for the River Arena. Uh, it'll contract there to the eastern areas overnight tonight and tomorrow morning and then begin to clear as the afternoon evening period. So right throughout the south we've got overnight storm clusters and tomorrow morning the whole system then contract and begin. It's a fairly fresh southwesterly, a southerly change in behind this system. So therefore along the coast temperatures only maxing out mostly in the low mid-20s at best with storm clusters beginning to ease and clear. Very similar picture right across the Monero 
Cairo to the capital, low to mid 20s, looking at the mid to high 20s, better conditions. All of the storm activity is passing over the Riverina and the southwest slopes tonight. Same story further north, the storm action overnight and throughout tomorrow morning. Then the whole system is going to clear and contract northward. Overnight and early morning storms likely to push over the tablelands. We may see some heavy downpours, some nasty cells they may be damage causing as well as this system passes overhead tonight. Hopefully they aren't too damaging. And that's Nine News Local for this Monday. Peter Overton's up next with your 6pm bulletin. I'm Natasha Soper. Enjoy your evening. Good night.